Hey, so you know what I haven't been recording myself doing? Um, making this stupid lightning refocuser. Hey guys, so this is going to be the start of an update video and uh, probably one of the last Mark 85 update videos, at least for this particular Mark 85 that's upstairs somewhere. I've been working on making this thing finally. You know this thing from Endgame when he's like, Thor, hit me. Bah. I, I'm making it. I've had the files for it for quite a while. I'm like crouching real weird. Um, and I finally am making it. I printed this thing when I was back in England. I just haven't had the time to finish it, but I am. I'm, I'm working on it and finishing it now. Like I have, I have everything printed. I even have the back part painted and done. And I have some footage of me sanding and priming it. I also know I have footage of the electronics getting installed, but we'll talk about those later once I'm done painting them. So I wanna catch up to where I'm starting now, even though I have some footage from before. These are the spikes. These are the two, you know, the big spiky things. They, they go here, wee. Um, they're gold. I needed to paint them gold because if you've been following along, you know in order to get that nice metal cast red, they're gonna be gold first. So I have them all painted and I was moving along pretty good and then I realized that they looked like dookie once I put the gold on. So I had to strip them down, sand them, whatever. Now we're ready to do the red, finally. So all six of them are painted here gold. Now I have to mask off the gold. So there isn't, there isn't, here, let me focus, focus. There isn't a lot of gold on these things. Um, let's see, right here, yeah, cool. Um, it's just like the tips right here, the little edges things here. Um, there's a little bit of gold pattern back here and then a little bit in there, not much. So I'm gonna take some painter's tape, cover up those spots on the spikes and then we can do everything in red. It's gonna be a lot of red. Okay, we're all taped off. Um, I had to do a little bit of creative, take a little creative liberty on the edges around the uh, tips of the spikes, but I think it'll look good. Um, yellow frog tape, it's amazing stuff. It, it doesn't pull the gold off. It might leave a little bit of residue. That's not a big deal because once I clear coat that, usually those marks go away. And then a really good X-Acto knife razor comes in handy. So yeah, it's perfect. Um, I need to paint all six of them at the same time. That's going to be key to this. This way the red all comes out the same. So as I I just, I, I can't paint like one fully and then another. I'm just going to do them all at once, uh, lay them all in a row and we'll get these red and see how it looks. Okay, we are in the home stretch, folks. Um, I took a can of the gunmetal I used for my suit and I sprayed it into a little tin cup and I hand brush painted all of it on. And it came out, it came out all right. Um, it could be better, it would be way better if I sprayed it, obviously. But again, I just, I did it out of order, I messed up. Um, and then I went and added a couple extra details to some parts that weren't, uh, you can't see it with the light. Anyway, we're clear coating now. Um, before I went to the gym this morning, I came in here and I dusted them with the uh, 1K clear. And when I mean dusted, I mean like a little like spritz coat, like, like and now it's kind of tacky and cured to kind of seal everything in. This is how you help retain shine in certain metallic paints like this Rust-Oleum Gold. If you just do one heavy wet coat, it ruins it, but if you build up little layers on it, it comes out really nicely. So I am clear coating now, and then um, hopefully by the end of the day, depending on how the clear coat does and dries, I might be able to assemble this thing. I don't want to rush it, but I really want to see what this thing looks like assembled, so let's clear coat. 
Okay, we are now in the process of attaching the spikes to the back. Um, the clear coat's dried-ish. It's good enough. And what I never showed when I was actually building this thing was how I was attaching the spikes. So it took a little bit of work, but I took some screws and I buried and melted them into the part. It, it took a while to do. There's um, bolt heads and nuts at the ends of them so they don't twist. So, Because obviously if it's just threaded in there, they can come out. So in each spike, there is three attachment points. There it is. And then I'm using some washers to hold them into place so they don't fall out. And this way I can also um, break it down to travel with it because this is gonna need to fit in a suitcase. And as it sits like this, that's definitely not gonna happen. But man, look how nice that's coming out. So um, I'm gonna get the last bit of the spikes in. We're gonna then peel off the tape that's covering all of the NeoPixels. That's been covering the NeoPixels for like the past year, honestly. And uh, we'll get this thing wired up and test fire it. Sick. Okay, it's assembled. Oh my God, that looks so, that looks so cool. All right, um, I gotta flip it over, get all the plugs connected and we can power it on and I can explain how I wired everything. It's actually super simple. Okay, let's talk about electronics. For this backpack, I am hijacking a Crashworks board. I want the power system to be completely independent on itself. Everything will be in the backpack and I can just put it on and take it off. Eventually, I'll integrate it into the suit to do more fancy things, but for now, it's all self-contained. Now, on the Crashworks 3D board, there is an auxiliary output and it just say, it says aux LED out, and it sends out a auxiliary LED signal wire. So out of the board, I have the power out, which is the positive and the negative right here, see, positive and negative, and then I have this red wire here is the auxiliary LED out. This is gonna power my NeoPixels, because in order to get a NeoPixel LED to work, you have, your po uh, you have a positive and you have a negative, and then you have a signal wire. And that's what that this green here is. That's the signal wire. And that's what's attached to the board. Now, if I power the board on, just hooked up to that one aux LED, it turns on. Perfect. It's being told to turn on X amount of NeoPixels. I think it, I actually have it set to seven. But I don't want it to turn on just seven. I need it to turn on a lot. So I made a jumper harness. So whatever wire, one power wire goes in, and then six power wires come out. One negative goes in, six negatives come out, one signal wire goes in, six signal wires go out. So now what I can do is install this jumper wire and I don't need to recode anything because it's sending the same signal to all of the LEDs. So now if I reset the board, I'm, the board isn't telling four, or 14 NeoPixels to turn on. It's only telling seven to turn on, but six different times. Actually, in my case, 21. Because I have uh, three of these in each spike, I'm telling 21 NeoPixels to turn on six different times. So no matter what one spike does, all of the other six are gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna just make it a lot simpler for now and uh, make it fire and forget. So let's get this plugged into the, the backpack and turn it on for the first time. Okay, spooky camera time. Um, I have the everything plugged in. There's the backpack, and I haven't, I have not powered this on yet. This is the you're gonna get a genuine reaction here. I just need to hit the little reset button that's next to the power switch, and all right, let's see if I can back this up enough to get all of it. Whoo! It works! <laughs> it's upside down, but um, oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, oh, that looks so cool. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, that worked. Okay, so like I was saying, I have the jumper wires going into it. It's just a spider harness going into six, and then I have them daisy chained, so seven, 14, 21. So if I ever, change this spike right here and I adjust this to be a different color and this one, all six spikes will do the same thing and without much, I don't think I'm ever gonna want them to do different things, but now I can code them to like pulse or flash and all six will do the same thing and I only have to code one signal wire. 
super simple. Um, the last thing I need to do now is make covers for these, but I don't think we're going to see that in this video. Uh, I, I'll, oh, I got to see the other side of it. I got to flip this around. Well, there's no lights, but I want to see it. Oh, that is one chunky boy. So there is going to be an LED in here. Um, I'm going to work on adding that over the next week or two. But wow, that's... All the photos of this are going to be insane. Yeah, now that I'm realizing all the stuff I have to do still, this was going to be the last Mark 85 update, but there's going to be one more because I still need to explain how I attach. I'm, I'm going to be attaching it to the suit. Um, and then there are some updates to the suit, like very small, minuscule things. But oh, this is, this is kind of heavy. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we'll figure it out. Let me put this down. All right, yeah, let's head back inside and I can explain a little bit more of what's left to fix on the suit. And yeah, there'll be one more video after this, but yeah, we'll, we'll go back inside. Okay, so with coming in here, I realized I haven't made a Mark 85 update in a long time. Like, I swear I'd made one more recently, but guess not. Um, so the things, I wanna talk about the, uh, just a quick few things that have changed and what's gonna be in the next update video, what I'm working on. Um, some of you definitely already know, I made the Walsh 3D Mark 85 helmet. So that's the Akira one. However, it broke across the Widow's Peak and the helmet's always been a little bit tight on me. So I decided to update the helmet. So this helmet, actually, not only does the faceplate open, the little jaw opens too, and there's inner detail on the inside, um, and I, I have a much more secure magnetic connection. I'm using the same type of foil tape I was using in Starboost's helmet. Like, it's just a better helmet. However, I haven't really put it to the test yet. I was gonna use it at, um, at KatsuCon. I just don't quite trust some of the connections yet, and that has nothing to do with Walsh's design. It's my own building skills. Um, I am hoping to wear this one to WonderCon because it's just a cooler helmet, and there's more room, and it doesn't give me as much of a headache. Um, there is a dedicated video to this coming out, start to finish, like how to print it, how to assemble it, how to motorize it, how to paint it, like beginning to end, whole video on this. So stay tuned for that one. Um, it just won't be till after WonderCon, till probably in April. Another thing I'm working on updating is I'm replacing the Mark 85's chest. I don't know why I hadn't done this sooner because as, if you've been following the series from the beginning, you know that the chest I'm currently using is the original V1 chest. It's a one piece collar and chest, but I'm using the V2 abs. You can actually, you can see the gap right here, this black line. You can see it in some of these photos. It's always bugged me. And I never, I don't know why I never thought to just print the new chest and turns out I've had the new chest printed. I've had this version of the Mark 85 printed forever. Um, this is the back plate to it right here. See? And then the chest plate goes on. I could swap the whole back. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I, so I am working on a couple extra small upgrades, just quality of life things. I think they go like this and they're gonna, they'll sit on the suit and then they'll have the new chest plate here that'll line up with everything. It's a much needed upgrade. And then obviously we have the lightning refocuser. Um, I still need to put in the LEDs and then make some LED covers for the spikes to diffuse the light. So this isn't the last Mark 85 update video, but I'm 99% sure the next one is gonna be. But this isn't the end of the Mark 85. It's just gonna be the end of this Mark 85. As a lot of you guys know, I've actually started printing a new Mark 85 suit. And not only am I printing just the one, I'm printing three. I'm printing the VEC 3D one. I already have the DO 3D one reprinted in the V2 files. And I'm also going to be printing Joe Props 3D because I, like I said in another video, I want this suit to be my, my ultimate cosplay suit. And I just know so much more now. We're going to be restarting the Mark 85 series. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Making the perfect Iron Man suit because it's going to be perfect for me. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, but it's gonna be a whole new series start to finish because I, I'm so much better at talking and teaching you guys, talking to you guys and teaching you guys. I know so much more now. So video one will be so informative about the files, the differences. Video two will be about scaling. Video three will be about printing. Video four will be about fitting everything. I'm gonna take them in the proper series order. This way everything's not jumbled around like it was in this. Um, I have an end goal. I know what I'm doing now. So this new series is going to be like my ultimate build series and I'm super excited for it. And I do finally know what I'm going to do with this suit, but stay tuned to hear about that at a later date. 
Oh, I have a Twitch. I have a Twitch tr channel now. Um, go check that out. It's linked down below. Um, twitch.tv slash frankly underscore built and I'm gonna be streaming workshop builds there like when I'm literally sitting here Oh, you know what? I need to do some PLA welding I need to do some buckles and straps and electronics things that wouldn't constitute a live stream on YouTube that don't warrant a dedicated video, but there's still information to be had. That's what my Twitch is gonna be for. Um, I was invited to a really cool program called the Twitch Accelerator Program. I was approached by Twitch directly, which is really cool. Um, it's not gonna replace my YouTube live streams. It's not gonna replace, it's gonna replace some of my Discord live streams. This, the, the streams I was doing in my Discord, discord.gg slash frankly built, where I would just hop on and talk to you guys for a little bit and work on projects they're mostly getting moved over to Twitch because Twitch saves them for a little bit. So if you can't catch me on Discord working live, you can go watch the Twitch. So I, there's gonna be benefits to this all over the place and maybe in an occasional video game. So it'll be fun. Um, if Twitch is your thing, please go check it out. Um, and it, yeah, it'd be, it would help me a lot. Thanks for the support. All right, yeah, so that's, that's, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Um, I, I hope you learned something in this. I do, I, I try to make every Mark 85 update video or. I try to make every video inf informative, right? Uh, that's kind of the point of all of this. So this thing came out so sick. I just like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit through doorways like at all. Can I crouch down enough? Oh, you know what? Bridges will cross when we get there. I'm not worried about it. Um, if you guys like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. I, like I said, I have, you know, all of the Mark 85 update videos I've ever done. I have some more Star Boost videos coming out. I have a new Mark 85 series coming out. I have a, a bunch of other cosplays, 3D printing stuff, all of that. It, the channels, I, I love where my channel's at. I, I, I think I make cool videos and uh, hopefully they're, they're helping you guys out. So um, yeah, subscribe. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave a comment down below. I read them all and I try to respond to as many as possible. But that's gonna be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. Hey guys, so I'm sitting here editing this video. It, it's it's on my screen right now. Um, and while I'm sitting here editing, uh, we we passed 750,000 subscribers. As of right now, we're at 750,029 subscribers. Um, like, thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say besides that. Like, thank you. Thank you for all of this continued amazing support. Um, it's not just a number to me. It never has been. Um, I, I think a lot of you know that. Um, I'm living my dream job right now. I'm sitting here living a lot of people's dream jobs. This is a pipe dream. I get to sit here in my house and make goofy YouTube videos about whatever the heck I want. Well, not like whatever that, but you know what I mean? Like I get to sit here and do this as my job. I get to travel the country and kind of the world at this point, um, making fun videos, hanging out with awesome people, sharing this amazing hobby with you guys. And I like just so feel like I'm where I belong and uh, 750,000 and 29 of you at this point agree or uh, at least like it enough to hit that button. So um, thank you. Thank you everybody um, for all of this. It has without a doubt just changed my life for completely and forever. Um, so we are three quarters of a way to a million subscribers and uh, I, that's gonna be, wow, yeah, so yeah, enough about that. Um, the video's the video's over. The video already ended. This is at the end of the reel. Yeah. So if you were watching this, thank you, uh, and thank you for watching any of the videos in the past. Thank you for watching all the videos in the future or whatever. Um, from the bottom of my heart, really, thank you, everybody. You guys have a good day.